Welcome to the Jag War Podcast, a show where we discuss all things related to Duval County's finest NFL football team, the Jacksonville Jaguars. Duval, baby! Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and welcome to episode 107 of the Jag War Podcast. In this episode, I'll be having a discussion with Jacksonville Jaguars middle linebacker, Joe Schobert. Joe Schobert was recently signed in free agency this March by the Jacksonville Jaguars. Joe Schobert played for the University of Wisconsin and was drafted in the fourth round of the 2016 NFL Draft by the Cleveland Browns. During his four seasons at Cleveland, he had a total of 408 tackles, eight and a half sacks, six interceptions, and seven forced fumbles. I had a blast talking all things Jags with Joe. Really enjoyed it, and I hope you do as well. Here's my discussion with Jacksonville Jaguars middle linebacker, Joe, the show, Schobert. Joe, thanks for taking the time to come on the show. Really appreciate it. No problem. Thanks for having me. So I ask this question a lot to uh, some of the players I've had on the show because it just fascinates me. Uh, how are you staying sane during this pandemic? Um, well, me and my wife had a baby four months ago, so taking care of him is probably the main uh, sanity, the, whatever deterrent. Um, and then I just work out during the day in, a, in my garage and we watched a lot of we've watched a lot of seasons of Survivor over the last couple of months. Um, but <laughs> nice. that's basically what our daily life revolves around. Nice, yeah. I'm trying to stay active myself, get outside and run. But um, you know, like you just mentioned, you and your wife Meg just just welcomed a, a newborn baby this year. Congratulations! Um, along, you know, with your 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 newborn baby, you also uh, you're you're a new member to the Jacksonville Jaguars, and you know you're learning a new defense as well. Then you throw the pandemic kind of into the mix of all that. How are you handling all the new changes? Yeah, it's just it's new for everybody. Um, even if you're coming back to the same team after 10 years, the this training camp is going to be new and different, and everybody's going to have kind of be on the same foot. Uh, foot. So for now, we're just reporting, getting tests done um, to see if people are testing positive, and you have to test negative a bunch of times before you can even be allowed in the building um next week so just uh going through that process um it's first time so i'm just gonna do what i'm told uh try to stay as safe and as smart as possible and hopefully everybody can be on the same page and we can get this thing underway gotcha so joe you're, you're an all-around great player very versatile and i'm sure a lot of teams would have had loved to have you on their roster um, I was just kind of curious how, uh, you know, what drew you to Jacksonville and how that kind of all played out. Yeah, I, I think free agency this year was an interesting situation because it was right at the start of the whole pandemic uh, scenario. So just fielding phone calls, I wasn't able to go visit anybody. I wasn't able to get to know anybody in, beforehand. Um, but Coach Marone and Doug Caldwell each called me um, while I was going through the whole process and I liked what they were preaching as well as uh, the opportunity to be able to come and play with a guy like Miles Jack was a, a big key to one of the reasons why I wanted to come down here. So um, there's a myriad of factors. My wife loved the weather, uh, loved wanted to live in a hot climate. So that's a, a cherry on top. Um, but there's a lot of a lot of other reasons to, to come down here. But I think those are the main ones. Gotcha. So are you actually at training camp right now? I know today was the day that, you know, the rest of the players were, were expected to uh, report. Yeah. Uh, reporting is just showing up at like eight in the morning and getting a test. And then you had to leave right away before not even allowed in, in the building. Um, so it was just show up, uh, take the test to go home, await your results. Then it's going to be the same thing tomorrow. And then on Friday. And then if you pass all those tests, you'll be able to go in the building and start. So I technically reported for camp, but it, wasn't much. I was there for 20 minutes. <laughs> gotcha. Are you aware of any, they doing anything else or taking any other special precautions or are you just kind of still, still waiting for more developments? Yeah, I think waiting for more developments um, besides just 
I think it's going to be daily tests for the first 14 days and then every other day after that. And you have to wear a mask, stay socially distant while um, in the building and just adhere to all those protocols. And I'm sure we're going to find out a lot more when we get into the building and start going to meetings and stuff because there's going to be differences um, from what we're used to. Um, and I think like working out, you can only have groups of like 15 at the most. So gotcha. the schedule is going to be different. They're going to be doing a lot of different things and we're going to, They've been told to us, but I'm just going to, as we go in, I'm prepared for most of it, but there's still stuff I think I've probably forgotten and other new things that need to be ironed out and told to us that we have to adhere to that um, we have to be ready for. So we'll see what happens. Yep. So last week it was announced that the NFL preseason was canceled entirely. Um, You know, as a new player, does this, you know, do you have any cause for concern just in terms of preparation for the upcoming regular season? Um, not quite, because the preseason games, especially when you're more veterans, um, you don't play very many defenses in them. I think practice is the biggest thing for getting uh, the schemes and schematics down and communication with everybody. Uh, the preseason is great for young guys. It's great for uh, the third game is usually good for the veterans to get out and knock the rust off. But with the scenario that's going on, nobody's going to be able to participate in preseason. I think it keeps everybody on the same foot and uneven footing. And I'm usually pretty good at picking up schemes and picking up uh, or communicating with teammates and stuff like that, especially in practice, working together the whole however many five, six weeks until the first game. Um, I think it'll be bigger for me to be doing that in practice than a preseason game would really present because you only play a couple of series or snaps depending on what game it is. And like the fourth preseason game, you don't usually play it all. So. Gotcha. So have you been doing a lot of kind of the uh, prep before camp over Zoom meetings with, you know, the coaches and staff? Yeah, we had, I mean, we didn't have in-person OTAs this year, but we had our a virtual meetings. So we got a, like two months of virtual meetings done with the linebackers and the defense and the coaching staff um, to lay some of the groundwork. And then me and some of the other linebackers met uh, about once a week over the summer to just go re go over some things and just talk and catch up. Um, but it'll just be nice to be meeting people and face to face and uh, talking in the same room, even if you are somewhat socially distant, uh, you still be able to communicate directly and then to get out on the practice field and walk through and practice these things. This is going to be the next step, and I'm excited for it. Yeah, yeah, I feel you. It's nice to have some human interaction finally. So, Yeah. So I want to segue a little bit into your college career at Wisconsin. You know, I was doing some research, and I came across a video essentially of you uh, dunking a basketball in front of uh, a, a group of people, and it was awesome. Everyone kind of went wild. Uh, it was really cool. Um, you know, just wanted to ask you, were you uh, did you play basketball in high school? Yeah, I played basketball my whole life until I went to college. And even in college, I was playing intramural basketball in the off season. I don't okay. know if it was allowed, but I was doing it. Okay. Um, so do you think, you know, you, you were a walk-on to Wisconsin, um, you know, obviously a hard worker. Uh, do you think, like, that video kind of helped get you some of the recognition uh, as a, you know, a great athlete and, and help you, you know, get a spot on the Wisconsin roster? Uh, well, that was going into my senior year, so I was already um, starting and playing oh, at that okay. point in time. But I think um, we play like, as football players in the summer. We'd play basketball all the time. We're going back to my freshman year um, gotcha. at the at the surf, the south, the recreational facility at UAB Madison. Um, so it was always funny because I'd go with guys who didn't know me at first, and then I'd play basketball and be able to just dunk and people would be taken by surprise. So I think the word slowly spread throughout the team. But no, I think my uh, getting on the football field and starting was more due to my football playing abilities in practice at my freshman and sophomore year um, going into the, the, that ducking video. Gotcha. So you, you played running back in high school. Um, and then I, I believe you, correct me if I'm wrong, played some safety at Wisconsin um, and then linebacker as well, obviously. Um, you know, as a linebacker playing, you know, both sides of the ball and essentially being the quarterback of the defense, do you think that's really helped you throughout your career? Yeah, I think, I mean, I played 
when I started playing football and I was younger tackle football, I was a middle linebacker. And then when I went to high school, I said, I played running back in safety. Um, I think the, the biggest help from that, obviously running back, playing offense, you understand, I mean, high school schematics are not nearly what they are in the NFL or college for that matter, but there's still the basis of it and the vision and the things you pick up on as a running back, trying to weave your way through offensive linemen and defenders, I think translates very well to the other side of the ball being a linebacker. Um, you, the vision of just understanding uh, in general, the blocking schemes and being able to track the ball carrier and, and find the holes that they're trying to find as well. Uh, I think that was big. And then playing safety uh, um, was big for me, being able to play in space, developing ball skills, being able to catch, catch the ball, get some interceptions. And then, as a safety, you're the last man in defense. You got to get really good. A lot of times, you're one on one with a with a ball carrier with nobody else around you, and they can go any which way they want. So yeah. it's a good, um, very good tool to be able to develop some open field tackling and being able to just read and react in space. Gotcha. So you know, with the upcoming season, you know, um, on the horizon, I was just kind of curious what what were some of your goals for the for the upcoming season as a Jaguar. Yeah, well, when I first made the move to middle linebacker, my only goal was to get 100 tackles uh, during the season. I thought that that, that benchmark was pretty cool. And now I've done it three years in a row. So I'm always going to have that as a goal. Um, but I think coming to a new city, playing with some new guys, obviously personal goals help team goals. Uh, but I want to help the, the team win as much as we can, win the AFC South, make the playoffs, make a run to the Super Bowl. Um, and on a personal level, I just try to – uh, be a Pro Bowl caliber player, whether you get um, chosen to go to the Pro Bowl or not, sometimes politics, sometimes not. But at the end of the day, Pro Bowl slash all pro caliber player, make an impact in that sense is something I really worked hard for and had in, in my mind this off season as I was working out. Yeah. I hope you get all those goals, man. I'm I'm rooting for you. <laughs> So, yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll close out, you know, your previous team, uh, the Cleveland Browns, you know, obviously being in Cleveland, very cold weather, uh, you know, you're coming down to Jacksonville and obviously it's really hot. Um, do you think that'll be kind of a transition, you know, learning how to play in the, in the hot weather? Yeah, I think for the, especially training camp will be um, a learning curve in terms of just how the body's adjusting and how you can play in the heat. And what you need to do um, for the rest of the day to be able to have your body recover every single day so you can come back and practice uh, the next day. Uh, but, I mean, Cleveland in the Midwest in the summers uh, gets, does get hot and humid, just not an everyday relentless basis as it does down here. Um, but it's going to be, I think, in the first month or so of the season playing games in this weather uh, is going to be a change, uh, something that I need to get used to. I remember, I think, my rookie year, we practiced in Tampa as a joint practice. And for those three days we were practicing, whew, we were, were coming down from Cleveland. It was a struggle. Um, so that's why I came down here about a month ago and I've been working out every day from like one to three o'clock in the afternoon, just to get used to the heat, just to be running in the sun and then getting the body yeah. uh, ready for training camp for what I'm, I'm going to need to experience this year. Yeah. Well, hey, man, I'm rooting for you, Joe. Thanks so much again for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. Uh, welcome to Duval. I'm really excited to see uh, you know, what you can do on the field for this upcoming season and uh, best of luck to you. Thanks. Yeah, thanks again for having me. And I'm excited to be here and hopefully the season gets underway with not too many hiccups and we can bring a lot of wins to uh, Duval County. All right. Thanks, Joe. Take care. You could hear it in our ground. Intimidation on the keep their hearts racing. Eating other teams live on TV front of the nation. Spectacular defensive scheme. This episode is available on the Jaguar Podcast YouTube channel. So if you stop by, make sure to subscribe and give this video a like. Also, these episodes are available on iTunes, Podbean, Spotify, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and other major podcast distributors as well. So if you don't mind, please leave me a review and some feedback. I'd really appreciate that. If you'd like to connect with me on social media, my Twitter handle is at Jaguar Podcast. I'm also on Facebook and Instagram. This is Andrew signing off. Cheers. Cheers.